Poles came to mourn the man who led their city for two decades. Pavel Adamowicz, a husband and father, was one of the country's progressive voices. EU Council President Donald Tusk flew to Gdansk, his hometown, to honor his friend. I want to promise you today, dear Pavel, on behalf of all of us, Gdansk residents, Poles and Europeans, that for you and for all of us, we will defend our Gdansk, our Poland and our Europe against hatred and contempt. We promise you this. Farewell, Pavel. Many people knew him personally. For me, it's terrible news, especially since we went to grade school together, just over there. I thought he would survive. I'm physically devastated. I'm very sad because I saw the mayor very often. On Sunday, Pavel Adamowicz was praising a fundraising effort for children in need. As the mayor looked out at thousands of people, a man lunged at him with a knife. The attacker then remained on stage, shouting that he blamed the mayor's former party for wrongfully imprisoning him. He was then tackled to the ground. Prosecutors are charging the 27-year-old suspect with murder. Just before his death, Adamowicz called Gdansk the most wonderful city in the world. A lasting message to the people he served. Well, for more now, let's cross over to journalist Maciej Bonk, who's standing by for us in Gdansk. Uh, Maciej, what does the death of Pavel Adamowicz mean for the people of Poland? Well, it means that the political discourse in our country crossed the thin line. There is so much hate in the discussion, especially in the social media, uh, that led to this uh, tragic final, uh, to this uh, event that uh, the whole Poland is terrified of. Um, Pavel Adamowicz was, uh, for the past three years, introduced by the public media as a public enemy number one. Uh, also because he has some he had some law problems uh, with his statement of assets but also because he was one of the faces of the pro democratic opposition uh, in Poland defending courts defending defending human rights defending uh, for example Le Valenza and um, also there was an event uh, called acts of political death uh, it was uh, produced by far right organization all Poland youth it was uh, produced for the uh, mayors of uh, 11 Polish cities who wanted to um, have immigrants uh, in their uh, in their towns, and uh, th this case uh, was uh, closed uh, by the prosecutors in Poland because they uh, they um, um, they decided that it wasn't a breaking of the law. And right now uh, there are uh, consequences about that. The hate speech uh, brought uh, to uh, this event and uh, to uh, the death of Pavel Adamowicz, but also to the uh, resignation of the chief of the uh, great uh, charity orchestra. Jurek Ovsiak, uh, who decided that he won't uh, be the leader of this organization uh, because of the hate speech. And during the final of the orchestra, uh, the murder uh, occurred. Now, public opinion, of course, has been highly polarized in Poland since the conservative nationalist uh, Law and Justice Party was elected three years ago. How is Pavel Adamowicz's death being interpreted by Poland's political establishment? Well, today, the um, political scene is not as polarized as it was before the attack, because everybody agrees that it's, uh, it was a barbaric act. Uh, everybody is in, in a grief, from Prime Minister uh, Mateusz Morawiecki uh, to President Andrzej Duda to all the politics from the opposition parties. Uh, so today we are all together, uh, but uh, we don't know what will happen uh, after for example, the funeral of uh, the president. Uh, where will the political discussion go uh, after this event? We all hope that uh, it will uh, be a cold shower for everybody, uh, for, especially for everybody who are using the hate speech. And uh, yesterday we saw a 
beautiful moment of solidarity in the whole country, the silent marches everywhere, also in Gdańsk in here, um, thousands of people gathered around the uh, Neptune's fountain. Also, as you stated, Donald Tusk, uh, there was also Le Valenza, uh, there were many uh, friends of Pavel Adamovich, also the presidents of Sopot and Gdynia, uh, the countries that are, uh, the, the cities that are uh, nearby. And uh, that was a beautiful moment of solidarity. Uh, we hope that uh, this solidarity would uh, last uh, for the next months and years, and uh, we still don't know when uh, will the funeral happen. Uh, we now know that okay. President Andrei Duda decided to um, okay. uh, announce National Grief Day uh, on this day of the funeral. Maciej, thank you so much for bringing us up to date. That was journalist Maciej Bonk there talking to us from Gdansk.